Hey everyone, today's totally true Bible story is one I love because it completely changed my life. I can't wait to share it with you. That's because you're my friends, but you're not just my friends, you're God's friends too. You know, God carefully and wonderfully created and crafted you and you and you and you. You know, the Bible says that God gave you bodies and bones and brains and blood. God made you in his very own image. Wow, let's celebrate you awesome creations. In your VBS kit, there should be a piece of construction paper and a piece of Velcro for each of you. I want you to find some scissors and crayons or markers or something to write with. Then I want you to cut out a paper heart and write your name on one side of it. On the back of the heart, I want you to attach that soft loop piece of Velcro. I'm gonna set a two minute timer for you to complete this task. So you need scissors and something to write with and do it. Are you ready? And go. Hey, since we're not together in person and you made your own hearts, I also had to make hearts with your names on them. You know, God made you all kids like Eliza and Miley and Alamea and Lacey and Peter and Julia and all the rest of you. He made you with love to be with him forever. You know, feel that little sticker you put on the back of your heart. What does that feel like? It's kind of soft, isn't it? It can remind you of the gentle, soft, sweet love that God has for you. He wants to be with you. I'm going to put your hearts on this big heart over here. This is God's best perfect plan, a close friendship connected with his creations. Unfortunately, it didn't stay that way. Humans, just like you and me, believed a big lie. God's enemy, Satan, told people that they didn't need God. He said, you can be like God. You know, we still sometimes believe that lie today. You can be good enough. You can do enough good things. You're good enough on your own. We sometimes believe that we can win and earn and achieve and do enough to make God love us and to be his friend. That lie separates us from God. You know, I want you to silently take that heart that you made and drop it on the floor. 
I'm going to take your hearts here off of the big heart too. As I was taking the hearts off of the big heart, what did you hear? You know, sin or wrong choices that we make tears us apart from God. It rips our friendship with him. It makes a mess. This isn't what God wants. So God gave up something precious to fix this big problem. You know, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live on the earth. Let me tell you a little bit about Jesus because he's someone I love very much. Maybe you've heard about Jesus. I want you to think about one thing that you know about Jesus and I want you to tell it to the people that you're with right now. If no one's in the same room as you right now, go find someone else in your house and tell them just one thing that you know about Jesus. You have 30 seconds and go. You know, the Bible, God's Word, tells us that Jesus lived on earth a long time ago. You know, if Jesus had a trophy, it could be for showing God's love to, to somebody that no one else seemed to notice. Um, he'd get first place, maybe a gold medal for healing people, or a blue ribbon for miraculously feeding crowds of hungry people. You know, Jesus did things that only God could do. He walked on water, he calmed storms, and he raised people from the dead. The Bible is filled with true stories of all the powerful things that Jesus did. He could do those things because he is God's very own son and he has God's power. You know, you've already heard a song about the best, most wonderful, and most important thing Jesus ever did. In fact, it's the most powerful thing in the history of the world, and Jesus did it. did it for every one of you. You know, the first two lines of the song tell us this. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. You see, not everyone believed that Jesus was God's son. Some people thought he was a liar. They got so angry that they arrested Jesus. They hurt him and they forced him to carry a rough wooden cross to a hill called Golgotha. There, they nailed his hands and feet to the cross and they left him to die. In that time, only criminals were put to death on a cross. But Jesus had never sinned. He was God's pure and perfect son. The song tells us the cross is an emblem, which means it's a picture of suffering and shame. You know, Jesus suffered for our shame. We may feel ashamed of the wrong things we do and the bad choices that we make. Even though we do a lot of great things like our trophies showed us, we all have sin. The next part of the song tells us this. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Slain means that someone was killed, 
Jesus was the dearest and best. And the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, he never sinned and he never deceived anyone. You know, when we do something wrong, there's usually a punishment or a consequence, right? When we sin, the ultimate consequence is separation from God forever. I want you to find that paper heart that you dropped on the floor earlier and pick it up. And then I want you to move away from everyone else that's in the room with you, sit down on the floor, bow your heads, tuck it down, and close your eyes. Imagine being separated from God's love, forgiveness, goodness, power, and joy forever. I want you to think about and just whisper one word that describes what that would be like. Even though Jesus never sinned, he willingly died for you. He loves you so much that he took the punishment for all of your wrongs. It was the only way to heal our friendship with God. You can open your eyes now. The next lines of the song go like this. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. You know, cherish means to value or treasure something, maybe like this trophy. Sometimes we value or treasure or cherish our accomplishments. You know, all those awards and things, it's okay to be proud of them. But a thousand ribbons or awards or good deeds can't wash away our wrongs. We can never do enough good things to earn heaven. The Bible says it this way. We can read in Ephesians chapter 2, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. You know, we're powerless to save ourselves. Only Jesus can save us. Let's lay down these treasures and awards at the foot of the cross as a way to show that he, God, Jesus, is most important. Finally, we sing these words in the song, and I'll cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. You know, Jesus' story didn't end at the cross. Remember, Jesus is God's son with God's power, and that power is stronger than death. Three days after Jesus died, something incredible happened. Listen to what the angel at the tomb said. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. Jesus' power beat death on that day for Jesus and today for you and me. The Bible promises this, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Woo -hoo -hoo. Now, Because of Jesus, we can cling to the cross, the promise, hope, love, and power it represents. The last line says we're going to exchange our trophies for a crown. You know, the Bible describes heaven as streets of gold with walls made of gems. Wow, this place Jesus is making for us is more beautiful than we can even imagine. There are no more tears or sadness, and God's peace and glory are everywhere. 
Wow, that's something to cling to. I'm gonna take your paper hearts to the cross and I'm gonna let them cling to the cross by pressing them on to this old rugged cross. You know, in your VBS kit, there are some gems, just like these gems. As, as I attach your hearts to this cross, you can find your gem. Finding them? See, we're exchanging our sinfulness for a life with Jesus in heaven. Let's now sing the old rugged cross as a prayer of thanks to Jesus. Hey, thank you all for participating today. Join us again on Wednesday for our day four Rocky wrap up. See you then.